What's up, guys? This is Matt Singer from ScreenCrush.com, and today we're counting down the top five best horror sequels of all time. Most horror sequels suck harder than a thirsty vampire. Looking at you, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. But there are a few that don't disgrace the memory of their predecessors. In fact, a few are even better than the movies that inspired them. With Halloween just around the corner, and with absolutely no Halloween sequels on this list, let's start our countdown with... Number 5, Psycho 2. This 1983 sequel to Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 masterpiece would also rank on the list of the top 5 worst ideas for sequels ever. A sequel to maybe the greatest horror movie ever? 23 years later? Made by anyone other than Hitchcock? While we're at it, why don't we just dig up Orson Welles' corpse and make it star in Citizen Kane 2, The Quickening. Sacrilegious as the concept may have been, the execution actually turned out pretty good. The idea here is that Norman Bates, played once again by the great Anthony Perkins, has served his time for the crimes his, uh, um, his mother committed 22 years earlier. Norman's deemed mentally healthy enough to return to society, but once he's back out in the real world, Mother begins to rear her ugly head once again. Is Psycho 2 as good as Psycho 1? Of course not. But it's a surprisingly unsucky successor, with some terrifying violence and a pretty melancholy story that poor Norman just can't catch a break. It's even got a surprising twist to rival old Janet Lee's date with destiny in the Bates Motel shower. I know this sounds like a terrible movie on paper, but check it out. You might be surprised. On to number four, Army of Darkness. I know, I know, some people prefer Evil Dead 2 to this third film in the Evil Dead trilogy, to which I say, Go ahead and run. Run home and cry to mama. That's right. Army of Darkness is the best Evil Dead movie. You heard me. Deal with it. Come at me, dead-eyed bros. In this 1992 sequel to Evil Dead 2, a still awesome but not quite as awesome 1987 sequel to the original Evil Dead, lunk-headed S-smart stock boy and zombie fighter Ash Williams is tossed through time back to the Middle Ages, where he must face another battle with the Evil Dead. Evil Dead is that rare franchise, horror or otherwise, that got better with every installment. Army of Darkness was the one where director Sam Raimi brought everything together. It's scary, hilarious, exciting, endlessly quotable, and filled from top to bottom with incredibly cool cinematography. There's really nothing else left to say except... Hail to the king, baby. Next up, number three, Bride of Frankenstein. In this 1935 follow-up to the first Frankenstein from 1931, Boris Karloff's monster, and no, his name is not Frankenstein, that's the doctor's name, manages to survive the end of the first film and escape. While he wanders the countryside looking for companionship and safety, Dr. Frankenstein, that's Dr. Frankenstein, is cajoled by his old mentor Dr. Pretorius into helping him create a mate for his monster. You know her. The Bride of Frankenstein's Monster, one of the most iconic characters in the history of movies. James Whale's sequel to the original Frankenstein might not look all that scary to our modern sensibilities, but it's difficult to overstate how important and powerful Bride of Frankenstein was in 1935. When Dr. Pretorius makes a toast with Dr. Frankenstein at one point in the film, he says, To a new world of gods and monsters. <laughs> And it's almost like he's anticipating the future of horror movies. Lots of gods, lots of monsters, and a whole lot of sequels. If only they were all as spooky, as atmospheric, and as poignant as Bride of Frankenstein. Now for number two, Aliens. Now Ridley Scott's Alien was no slouch in the scares department, but James Cameron's sequel upped the ante by adding an S to the title and a whole lot more Aliens to the mix. You saw what one xenomorph could do to a spaceship. What could dozens of these critters do to a planet? And if these things got off the colony on LV-426, it'd be... Game over, man! It's game over! Cameron's Aliens is less of a traditional horror film than Scott's Alien, and more of a balls-to-the-wall action movie. But it might be the most intense and terrifying action movie ever made, with scores of face-hugging monstrosities racing everywhere, devouring colonists and space marines and little kids, and, and maybe even Sigourney Weaver if she's not too careful. Aliens also showed it's better not to just copy the first movie when making a sequel. You gotta do something different. P. 
people expect more from a sequel, and James Cameron gave them all they could handle. Now it's time for our number one best horror sequel of all time. You guessed it, it's Dawn of the Dead. Applying a similar philosophy to James Cameron's Aliens, George Romero didn't simply rehash his zombie classic Night of the Living Dead for its 1978 sequel. He broadened its scope, deepened its mythology, and ramped up the gore. No longer confined to a single farmhouse in Pennsylvania, this film finds the zombie apocalypse spreading rapidly throughout the U.S. and follows a quartet of friends as they try to escape by a helicopter. They stop at a mall and realize it's the perfect place to hole up and ride out the infection and to make some pointed satire about America's rampant commercialism. George Romero made several more zombie movies after Dawn of the Dead, but this one was his masterpiece. Dawn of the Dead has got it all. The gruesome violence, the claustrophobic dread, and the biting social commentary. <laughs> biting. And hey, the 2004 version directed by Zack Snyder and written by James Gunn's actually pretty good too. Definitely a worthy contender for any list of the best horror remakes of all time. But that's a top five for another episode. For Screen Crush, I'm Matt Singer. Thanks for watching, and for even more, make sure to subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get the latest movie and TV news on ScreenCrush.com.